You want details? Bye. I drive a Ferrari, 355 Cabriolet. What's up? I have a ridiculous house in the South Fork. I have every toy you can possibly imagine. And best of all, kids, I am liquid. So, now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. Okay, just Kyle and I today, which is really, let's not kid ourselves, we only want Kyle on Life Advice. Life Advice email is lifeadvicerr at gmail.com. Do you play golf, Kyle? No, I mean, we've been over this. I'm scared. I'm scared to do it in a public setting. I'll go to Top right. Golf. I told you I would give you a really decent set of I know, clubs. I know. And that All was right. like a year ago. I don't think I've seen right. you since a year before you said that either. So. Yeah, I still think somebody from the ringer stole my new balances that StockX sent me too. So, uh, if I'll see you... if we can arrange an exchange. Yeah. No, I, the sneakers have nothing to do with you. The, the golf clubs are on me. I could have invited you and Titus down at some point, but I didn't. Um, but that's not really because I don't like anybody. I guess I just, I'll realize, hey, I don't really hang out with anyone. So, I get all right. it. Yeah. But then I do hang out with people because that's not entirely true either. I kind of say that and then I'm like, all right, now I'm going to hang out with people. All right, here we go. Um, our guys checking in from Laredo. No need for measurables. Not ideal. I've been a golf for about two decades, 20 years, kids. Still not any good, but shoot low to mid 90s. You know what? That's fine. Unless he's doing kind of the round down thing. It's probably over 100, but yeah, I don't know. If you're shooting bogey golf, it's probably a little frustrating if you've played a lot over 20 years and you're not in the 80s more consistently because I've seen guys that don't look like they're great athletes um, that just play a lot, figure it out, and, and can shoot in the 80s regularly. But bogey golf's not exactly a bad time. Problem came up as I'm playing with a friend. Uh, I normally give him a few, straight, a few strokes, but he's not far off in my skill level. We went out recently. I was playing well. Ended up with an 85. Nice, nice. My friend, on the other hand, had the worst day I've seen him have since picking up the game about 18 months ago. Beat him by 40 strokes. Wow. So he shot a 125. My question is, how do you handle rising tension and general pissed off attitude in the cart between shots? It was a Sunday, and the course was on the slow side, so we had a lot of time to kill in the cart and at the tee boxes. Normally, I try to laugh it off and find the bright spot in his game, but it just wasn't there, and he was becoming more upset and as any golfer knows, that almost always leads to worse play. Any help for dealing with this? Uh, this happens to everybody that plays golf. Uh, I don't play at all anymore. I played this past week um, at the Vineyard Golf Club, uh, which shout out to them. I appreciate you letting me get on for a quick, I don't know, I think I played like seven holes because it was raining. Um, and my brother is there, so it was kind of cool to be home. And my brother had never golfed before, so I was like, hey, look, let's get out there and swing it around a little bit. Um, and it just reminded me how much you actually can love it, even when you're not that good at it. But I also know myself, and I also know I'm super competitive, and I'm hitting a couple of bad shots. I'm literally not playing in a course in a couple of years. And, of course, my brother's younger than me, so he's not allowed to get mad at me. But I wasn't, I wasn't happy after a couple of shots, and I had to be like, hey, what would you expect? This is a really, really hard game. This is a really hard game, uh, but that's not normally the way you feel. So I remember, I think the last time I played in something for real, it was a tournament, you know, best ball. So I'm good to have a round for that, um, even though I'm not that good. And I hit a couple bad tee shots, which is what I was there for. And my buddy's like, wait, are you going to get pissed today? Like you don't even play anymore and you're going to get mad. And he was kind of giving me a warning. He was really looking at me, giving me a warning. Like, you, are you going to try to carry yourself? Like, you have this expectation that you're just going to come out here and shoot, like, in the 80s? Or just, you know, we're going to be using your ball throughout the entire day? You're here for about five tee shots, hopefully. And that's the only reason you're here. And he was right. He was right. Um, because it's really, when you're not good at it, to then get mad is really about something else. You know, I can accept being mad about some things every now and then when it comes to golf, you know, like some guys that are pretty good, they get some money on the line. Somebody wants to throw a club, but if you're throw a club, kick the cart, be mad, swear after every shot, it sucks to play with. It just sucks to play with you. Cause then and you're, then you're kind of just doing like this performance thing. Um, and so to handle this, I mean, if you're that close enough friends, you can say, I would think you could just say, Hey, you know what, man? Like, and it sucks because you can't like do it out of the first tee box because then it rattles him and he's going to be a mess for the first few holes anyway. And then he's going to blame you for bringing it up. I think you're going to bring it up in, in a softer manner. Like my buddy did it to me directly because he knows I like direct where he's like, wait, are you going to be mad about bad shots today? Is that what you're going to do? You never play. And he was right. And it reset me. And I go, you know what? Relax. Just be happy. I'm here with my friends. Um, but I'm, I guess I'm giving myself credit for being able to adapt to that because I don't know that everybody's going to handle that the right way. 
because I don't know what this guy's about. But I would maybe in a playful way, the next time you're out maybe having beers, not golfing, maybe a third party, maybe there's another friend that's part of the core group here. You bring him out, maybe you bring two guys out and you guys just all start bullshitting about whatever. And then it gets to the golf episode and you just start going man you were on one last week and then you talk it out with him a little bit right so that it doesn't feel direct but it's exactly what you're doing and everybody starts giving each other a hard time and then you know as the beers flow you can start saying i don't know that i can cough with you again man if you do that and so these things will be planted implanted into his head so that hopefully if he's a reasonable person the next time around he'll remember this even though it was playful it didn't feel accusatory it wasn't you know, it wasn't you being as mad as you are and being annoyed by it. Like I had a friend one time we were playing and look, we were out bullshitting. He started taking golf more seriously than I did. And we weren't playing for any money. And he was like, what did you have on that? I was like, I think I had a six. And he's like, you had a seven, Ryan, you had a seven. And then he counted back the strokes. And again, I wasn't even trying to cheat for any reason at all. I just fucking didn't care. And I was like, I think I had a six. He's like, you had a seven, you had a seven. And I was like, man, that's some pent up shit there. Like what's going on with that? He's like, well, you don't always keep score. I was like, cause I don't really care. I go, I wasn't, I wasn't going to tell people if I shot a 90. Now at this point, when I was playing with him, I definitely didn't care. The time when I was decent and had a membership, I, we cared and we kept it straight, but I wasn't better than the other guys. So I didn't play for money anyways, cause I was going to lose. Um, but I was like, wait, you're really, really mad about this whole thing. So golf people could get, you know, they can get really mad about a bunch of different things. I don't think you're wrong in this one. I think you're right. But if you do it off the first tee box, hey, you were an asshole last time. Don't be an asshole again today. Then you've basically ruined the round. You've ruined his day, even though it doesn't seem like you could ruin it anything beyond if you shoot a 125. Um, I would I would do it playfully if there's some other guys kind of plant the seed that, hey, that wasn't the greatest time. But do it in a way where it feels like you're just busting balls so he doesn't get all bummed out, defensive and offended. Kyle? I don't know. I don't know about any of this. I think I would actually just take your advice because I don't have any to give. Okay. Um, that wasn't a great Kyle one and that's my fault, Kyle. So you understand that, right? Like I just think people come for the Kyle. Maybe they come for the Ryan. They stay for the Kyle. I think that's probably, that's probably, that's apt. Learn. That's probably apt. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right. So let's, uh, let's turn up the heat again. This one's, um, I don't know if this one's, it starts off sad. It feels sad, but maybe it can be happy too. Who knows? 39. Six foot, 195, can do 12 straight, strict pull-ups. It's great. Um, kind of in between dad bod and fit. Married, seven years, younger daughter, just bought a house. Uh, just got a huge hammer dropped. Wife does not want to have sex with me anymore. She said she gets anxious about it. Doesn't want to have the pressure of that part of her relationship. Sex for us is pretty standard, nothing weird. Usually maybe once or twice a month, which I was totally fine with. But now she said she wants zero. I do not think there's another guy because my wife basically has been asexual for a while now. Um, she doesn't mention good looking men on TV. There's some other stuff in here. I'm just going to leave out, but I think you guys get the picture here. Um, when a guy hit on her at the gym months ago, she was weirded out by it. I'm basically a broken man. I'm frustrated and upset. It's extremely hard not to think of it. It's another guy, but I don't think that it is. She works from home all the time. And the only time she ever goes all out is with my daughter. Uh, very rarely has a girl's night out talking once a year maybe here so i assume cheating is not there we've discussed options like divorcing or an open marriage she says she feels bad that she can't fulfill that part of our marriage and encourages me to go out on a date basically an open marriage i don't know what to do we just bought this house it's really great my daughter loves it um close to family i love seeing my daughter every day her growing up this is very important we both make six figures i'm in the low end she makes close to double and plans to make much more um high rent area so um He's he's talking about if he divorces, his budget isn't really going to work out because real estate right now. And as we all know, some of the you real estate guys out there, we all know this this part of the podcast. You guys are your favorite part. But yeah, real estate's insane in some of those desirable places like we've never seen before in the country. So he's basically saying, like, look, I could move into a co-op if I want to move out. My wife and I joked about me retiring 15 years to just taking care of the house. But I feel like that's down the drain. I don't think in my 40s I would be back on the scene, but I guess that's where I'm headed. Any advice would be appreciated. Love the pilot. Thanks. Well, some guys are hearing this going, it's on, man. You live in the dream. Uh, but that's not the case, right? There's, there's some real emotions here. It feels like everything with the family part of it was fine, um, even if she were willing to only have sex once or twice a month. I will tell you that um, hearing the stories from different friends long term, uh, Kyle, does it kind of blow your mind 
when you talk to older people, and I know that I'm older, but I, since I've, I've never been married, but when you'll talk to people and be like, hey, it just stops, like you just stop doing it, how common, how often that happens. And I would say to the single guys listening, how horrifying that sounds. I don't like, I don't know what the truth is. Like, I feel like some things feel like myths and they're not. And I don't really talk to many older people about what, how, what the frequency is with sex. Once you get to a certain age or I, or I know the myth is after marriage, but then I know like in the beginning of marriage, it's like, cool. But then like, I just, I guess it's a gray area for me. And I've heard conflicting things through TVs and my very few conversations that I've ever had with somebody in, in the fifties, sixties. I guess 50s would probably be more 40s, 50s. So I guess I don't know which way it could go. It just seems like a pretty shitty dice roll and it could either like stay good or go really bad. So I guess I wouldn't ever say that I've had a read on it, but I just, I've got conflicting responses. Okay, well, I'll tell you right now, it's not a myth, all right? I have too many friends now and, you know, I'm definitely older than you. How old are you again? I'm 27. Right. So, okay. I've got like two decades on you now. I'm telling you, it's not a myth. I mean, it happens, but until you experience it yourself, it always feels like this fable, you know, you're like, wait, what? Like what like happens? Everybody, like, like this, the situation with like Ray and Deborah and everybody loves Raymond where he's just like begging and it seems like it happens <clears throat> once every four weeks for him. But then sometimes yeah, I wasn't it seems a huge like it happens more about everybody yeah, loves Raymond. I I, Jesus. I didn't watch that show. Okay. That was a go-to for you. Were you a big King of Queens guy? No, I was actually not a big King of Queens guy out of spite because I thought Everybody Loves Raymond was so great. Okay. All right. Fair. Fair. Okay. So this is true. And clearly this guy's writing about it. It's true. I think the biggest thing, man, is you can't be so upset with yourself, first of all, right? I mean, unless there's something that you're not admitting to us, which is, you know, can be the case a lot of these times we're only getting one side of the story here but if we're to take this the way it's being presented to us is i know this is devastating because you want the family part of it like you don't want to just move out um but yeah it does feel weird i mean that's that's got to be kind of weird like you come home and your wife's like how was your date and she has no problem with the emotional part of this where you'll become emotionally attached to somebody else or you're not allowed to be emotionally attached you can only be physically attached but then once you become physically attached a lot of times you do become emotionally attached and she's okay with all of that stuff so it's not just that she decided she just doesn't want to have sex anymore about it which again you know you've you've got to deal with um i think the part where she's totally okay like i'm just i'm wondering what she says to divorce if it's even discussed like if you say to her I'd like to be divorced. Um, is her response no? Or is her response like, yeah, totally, I get it. That's fine. Like, is she that detached from it? Because now we're talking about something that's beyond just withholding sex. It could just be that, you know, she doesn't want to be with you anymore. And any one of my friends that um, has either been divorced or has talked about it, because I, I think it, you know, probably creeps into most relationships. You know, it's somebody at some point, even the stronger marriages, there'll be a, some rough patches there where you're like, wait, is this not going to work out? Um, I never really quite know. So I don't pretend to have the answer to this again as a non-married, non-parent, but the calculus of how much do I do for my family? How much do I do for the other person? How much do I do for the relationship? And how much do I do for myself to make sure that I'm still happy? Because I think that last part's the one that's the easiest to ignore. Um, you know, I personally, you know, uh, can can understand like a family fighting to stay together, but sometimes fighting to stay together is really the worst thing that you can do. Um, I think it's great. And, you know, being a parent um, immediately gets you out of your own head. You start thinking about this other person, the bullshit that's, that gets you caught up in all the, just the day-to-day -day nonsense. Like none of it really matters anymore. So it's easy to get through that stuff because you got something that really matters uh, that you got to get up for every day and make sure you're creating a better life for. And there's, there's a selflessness in that, that I think is the beauty of, of being a parent and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it doesn't mean it has to be 0% about you. And I, I think, you know, some of the experiences I've had with my own life and, and other friends, it's like, you can't, and maybe this makes me sound selfish, but if it's 50% about your daughter and 25% and, and about the marriage, you know, it's still, it's okay to have that number be higher than zero about yourself. So really what I'm saying here is 
I would figure out like where is she on the marriage? Because if it's if it's not just sex and that she doesn't care if you're not there the next day, um, then you're going to be in a relationship with somebody that doesn't even want you around because you love being around your daughter and it's because you don't want to live in a shittier house. You know, I would live on a couch before I would live in a shitty living situation. Um, but again, I don't have a daughter, but I've always felt like, you know, kids, kids are smart. Kids are around you every day. You know, they're your third roommate or depending on how many kids you have, you know, growing up in a house where that part of at the top is, is strained. I think people will say, again, this is my own experience, but people will say, Hey, stay together. The kids stay together. Cause the kids stay good. It's like, yeah, that's, that's not, that's not always in the best interest of the kids. So I would figure out the wife part first, man. You know, I, honestly, I would need a more definitive answer on where she's at with you hanging out with other women. If she has no jealousy whatsoever, that's that's weird because then it would make me think she doesn't even really care about you. And I don't mean to be so brutal about it, but like that's this this email feels like it's it's more about something else than it is just a sex part. Now, if she's cool and she loves you and she's supportive and she wants you in the family and all that stuff's good and you're going to be out on the scene at 40. All right. You know what I mean? Good luck. Uh, it's going to be, there are enough challenges if you haven't been sharpening the iron out in the scene for over a decade. Now as a 40-year-old guy, not to bum you out, but it's real. Um, you could get on a dating site, but now that means her family and neighbors, somebody's going to see it and they're going to be like, what the fuck's going on here? Um, and you're going to have to find somebody who's down to hang out with a guy that actually has a family where it's not a Don Draper situation unless you look like them, you'll be fine. Uh, so there's, yeah, you get some stuff, but I would, I would try to figure out the first part of this first. Any thoughts, Kyle? Not too many, not too many thoughts. I will say I am a child of divorce. So, um, I, it, it's not the fifties anymore, dude. You can get divorced if like things aren't working out and like, obviously you're <laughs> writing a podcast about it. You're definitely thinking about it, which means you're probably thinking about it every day, which means it probably makes your days pretty shitty. And I think that's one of the grounds for divorce is when all of your days are shitty. Um, but yeah, it's not the 50s anymore. You can totally do that. And I guess I just kind of have more of a question. I would hope you'd accept a follow up here. He said that she's basically asexual. So I did a little Google search, wound up on WebMD. So ex asexuality is it's, it's actually it's kind of a muddy water situation. It seems like you can say the word and it's it could be a sexual orientation or it could just be the absence of sexual feeling. So it's just like I guess I'm wondering, because the first thing I was going to say is, did you have a conversation about it? It sounds like he did, where he was just like, listen, this is something that bothers yeah. me. I've noticed we're not having sex. So like that that hard, awkward part is out of the way. So he did that. I guess, is it something where it's just not going to happen right now? Like I've dated somebody who's like, had like a tough sexual past where it's like sex, be sex was like a bargaining chip or, or or whatever. Like they just have weird feelings about sex. But it sounds like this is like, simpler as like i just don't have any sexual attraction to you so if, like have you actually come to the conclusion that this is just never going to happen for you and maybe you know that not that she would be into like taking some sort of pills or chemical reaction things but like have you like already come to the conclusion where it's just like this is how i feel not like yeah i don't know why i haven't been feeling it lately like have you have you really done the hard conversations if you're talking i guess they must have if they're talking about maybe going on dates and stuff i guess yeah, this is fucking tough. It I feels like all of this is, you're right. Whoa, wait, Kyle, you just dropped the, the divorce bomb on us all? What? Because like, it's like, it seems like that's one of those classic things like, yeah, so if she doesn't have any sexual attraction towards you, it doesn't mean she doesn't care if you're like spending your time with someone else and like enjoying like inside jokes with someone else. And, and I don't know, like you're still like, it's going to be really hard to balance that coming, coming home to then with kids and then also you have to spend time with her because you still like her as a person you just can never get to the sexual thing that you guys both used to have so it's like i don't know like it seems like one of those things where she's gonna say yeah it's fine and then it's not gonna be fine and then your life's gonna suck for other reasons too so i don't know wow. i think just... sex is a big part of a marriage i think you should get divorced <laughs> kyle just not not mincing words i uh I'm not ready to offer up any more on this because I think there's a large part of the audience. It's like, you two idiots should shut up 
uh, about this. Totally. Which is we should fair, never talk about also. any of this stuff, but that's part of the segment. <laughs> I mean, and the, the, honestly, it's not like this guy is like a lot of people who's like, yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot. Like he's had the tough conversations. He's he knows what she feels about. He's not like I'm wondering what she's going to say about this. She told him this, the stuff that you never expect to be told, like which means they must have been at least a couple conversations in. So like he's he's done. A but lot this of stuff the happens. You know, you're right. You're totally right. But I just think it's always important to remind yourself that, you know what, um, there are all sorts of relationships that have all these where I'll hear about a divorce. I'm like, what? And then a buddy will tell me about something else. I'm like, what's going on? And you're always kind of like, I can't believe that's crazy. And then you start to realize like it's crazy when it isn't crazy. Right. The crazy ones. It's <laughs> like, now nah, I'm totally I'm totally neutral. Everything. I'm just, you know, very content. Just a nice, easy, slow stroll through the park for the next 30, 40 years. Kids are good. Got to get to good schools. You know, no college loans, you know, and you know, like, oh, so that that's that normalcy is actually the most odd, you know, the, the odd thing of, of all these different relationships. But I would just emphasize one more time. Don't feel bad about you wanting to feel better about your situation, whatever that solution is reminder check out the bill simmons in house and myself uh nba preview podcast two-parter all 30 teams over unders our finals picks awards picks as well that's in the bill simmons feed i will tweet it on this one thank you to kyle as always we'll talk to you friday